How about that last night? Yeah. Unfortunately, my CFO and I we have to fly back tomorrow afternoon, so it would be good if we can do it in the morning. Oh, yeah, I'll have a meeting session. Just so. Okay. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. 很高兴与各位新老爷爷朋友见面。首先要祝贺，就是亚洲爷爷会议的顺利召开，也中国演艺协会吧，作为就是会议的协办单位，对各位光临就是会议表示欢迎。Well, our next speaker this afternoon is、um, Vladimir Sudivi. I have already introduced him this morning、um, and with his distinguished career in the salt industry, which I think I'm fair to say spans nearly 50 years.、Um, but suffice to say for this presentation is the fact he invented the biocell and the hydrocell purification technologies and is therefore the best person and most well placed to talk to us today about why this process was selected for the Mardi project. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction, and、um, <clears throat> I will try to、um, save my voice for the next 30 minutes for the presentation. Yesterday I was、uh, doing it for eight hours、uh, to some people who came for my uh, for my uh, uh, training, coaching, and uh, uh, well, uh, keep. Keep me fingers crossed.、Uh, my second second thanks, of course, is、uh, to BCI Minerals that they have <coughs> selected the、uh, hydrosol process for their project.、Um, one of the thoughts behind this is, when you do something, do it either cheaper or better. But the best is to do it cheaper and better. So. Do a good project with good design, with good technologies, and、uh, that what、uh, salt partners uh, uh, aim is for the BCI minerals project. I will go through this very quickly. These are figures that、uh, have been mentioned、uh, here today: 300 million. <coughs> Tons of salt per annum. Out of that, about 180 million for the industry, mainly for the costochlorine industry, which requires a very high quality salt.、Uh, the cost or price of the salt depends on the quality, and、uh, with the solar salt for industrial use, we are somewhere here. Approaching 100 percent sodium chloride content, but still being in the low range for prices required for the industrial use. Impurities in salt. There are these impurities are the main impurities that are present in the sea salt. And、uh, that's what I am going to talk about.、Um, this is what needs to be taken out of the salt. So it's a cost. It, it's a it's a question of purification of the salt as it is being produced and it is being harvested and purified, and then it can be marketed. There are several systems of、uh, doing the purification. Of uh, salt uh, after it's harvested,、uh, simple washing systems with a drip of belt.、Uh, this one is more a dissolving plant than a washing plant. The efficiency is very low and the losses are extremely high.、Uh, this is an um, um, an classifier uh, with. Um, A screw conveyor.、Uh, the salt comes into the lower part. It is、uh, flooded with brine, 
and the salt is pushed up through the screw out of the water. It has certain disadvantages. The uh, water or the washing brine is being sprayed over the salt at the higher part of the uh, screw conveyor, but this is what actually happens. Uh, the, the, the brine that goes into the overflow is in a very highly turbulent status. That means it is taking a lot of fine salt with it. On the right hand side of this picture you see, you see the deposits of uh, the fine salt in the settling pond. On the left hand side of this picture you see the brine and on the right hand side you see uh, the salt. <clears throat> uh, the screw conveyor is turning from left, sorry, from right to left. It is pushing the salt to the left. Here is the salt is high and the brine is flowing on the left hand side uh, along the salt. It is not a counter current process. It is a bypass process as far as the brine is concerned. Here it is, there is more details of that. Here you can see the salt. And here you can see the brine flowing backwards. The efficiency of this uh, these uh, salt washing processes uh, is somewhere around 50-60% or it is even lower if uh, more water is or it is, it is, the losses are very high. The losses are around 10-20% uh, to 20%, but it can be even more if uh, the users of this equipment are trying to produce salt of high quality and high quality means at least 99.8% of sodium chloride. Now, <clears throat> how this hydrosol process was developed, what was the driving force behind that? It was in uh, 1997 when my previous company, the Krebs Swiss, built a salt washing plant supplied by Salan de Midi and incorporated it in a caustic chlorine plant. And when I joined the company, I was given the job to evaluate the performance of this plant. We received the first results from uh, the plant and we put them on a piece of paper and it looked very nice, yes, as a, almost a straight line. On the left hand side here, there is uh, the purity of the purified salt and here at the bottom is the quality of the salt going into the wash plant. So we said, okay, this is beautiful, we make a correlation. Then next week, well, we, we first made the correlation here, we said, okay, this is going to be what we are going to guarantee to the buyers of our equipment, of our, of our washing plants. And then, uh, a couple of weeks later we got more data from the plant it looked like this and after several weeks of operation this was what we were seeing so the correlation was no good uh, we realized that this is not the way how to do it that uh, we cannot uh, sort of simply say well if your salt has so and so much impurities our process can get that and that quality of the salt out of it. And we saw that we have to go much uh, further, much deeper down into the matter and find out a lot more. We had to study the nature of impurities, we have to study the phase equilibria, the structure of salt crystals, salt and brine contact time that is required to get the high degree of purification unit operations that we need and so on and so on. This is the phase equilibria that we have been using with the normal type of uh, sea salt that we are getting. Uh, we are somewhere here. 
and uh, the salt that we are getting out of the process is somewhere right here in this bottom corner. Then we had to take a look at the salt crystals. We have seen that um, the salt crystals, if you break them, they are not homogeneous. You can see the layers. They are layers of cavities. Uh, the afternoon, high, still high temperature, but sinking temperature, and a lot of heat still in the brine, leads to a speed up of the crystallization and to inclusions of uh, some cavities. The other part of this picture, this one on the right hand side, shows the this, the same the same break point of this or break surface of this crystal in a, in a, uh, in a, um, a sharp light <laughs> and you can see here that the crystal contains crevices and cavities the bitterns that are enclosed inside the cavities cannot be improved cannot be cloudy, cannot be clean, cannot be uh, taken out. Then we were looking at the impurities in the salt. We have taken a, a mineralogical microscope and took a look at the crystals on the left hand side in the normal light. <coughs> then we switched over to polarized light and have <coughs> seen only the impurities. But in the face shifted polarized, polarized light, we can see both the salt crystals and the impurities. The impurities are very beautiful. They are uh, orange and turquoise uh, colored. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nice thing to look at. We have seen impurities that look like this, or like this, or like this. And we have taken some time to find out what is what. We have uh, determined, and I will show you later how we did it, that this is the astrachanite, this is a bitter salt, and this is calcium sulfate, a gypsum crystal. We have also taken a look at uh, what can we do with the salt if the impurities are inside and we started breaking the crystals and have seen that they break where the impurities are embedded, here. But fortunately they break out and they fall out of these crystals so that they can be removed given the suitable uh, unit operations. We have examined the way how to separate the gypsum crystals from the rest of the salt with minimum losses and we have determined that allotriation is the right unit operation for that. Here in this picture you can see a, a gypsum crystal about 0 0.2 millimeters long and the longest, largest uh, salt crystal that is getting removed from the process is this one. It's about 0 0.0 millimeter, 0 0.08 millimeter long. And in the harvested salt, you have a very, very low content of such small crystals. So that the process is combined with a very low losses of salt. We have then taken a look at this, this concept of more thorough washing. If you want to make pure salt, better quality salt, you have to wash it more. And we were washing and washing and washing, and this is what was left, only the impurities. Because by more washing, you dissolve the sodium chloride, you dissolve the salt, and what is left are the insolubles and the calcium sulfate gypsum, which is much less soluble than sodium uh, chloride, and that's what is left. 
So more thorough washing does not bring a better quality, it only produces enormous losses. This is how we have determined what the impurities are. We have synthesized them and have taken a look at them under the microscope. Here on the left hand side is the gypsum, here is the astrocanide and here is the bitter salt. Then we have compared the, the, the purified salt with the rest, with the, the unpurified raw salt with the purified salt and we have seen that whatever we do, this, this purification was done of course with saturated brine so that we have no dissolution, we have no losses. We only have a phase equilibria change between saturated brine sodium chloride brine and brine with some more impurities. This is what we have done. We have seen that still, even after a very thorough uh, purification, we still have some impurities inside the crystals. We have determined the following uh, unit operations as being the most effective for salt purification. It's the hydro extraction. Hydro extraction is passing the pure sodium chloride brine upwards through a layer of salt, picking up the impurities. We are passing 25% saturated sodium chloride solution. We are removing the impurities from the crevices and from the surface by diffusion and we are, we are, uh, 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 we are concentrating the magnesium chloride and magnesium sulfate in the brine. At the same time the solubility of sodium chloride is being reduced and how much it is reduced you can see in that phase diagram that I was showing at the beginning. It is only 15% sodium chloride and 10% of magnesium chloride and magnesium sulfate that is actually leaving the process. So with 100 liter of washing water converted suitably into saturated clean pure brine we are only losing 15% of sodium chloride which converted into the total process as I will be showing later represents only 1.5% losses by dissolution. The other <coughs> unit operation is elutriation Elutriation means you let the solids fall through saturated brine and uh, you set the saturated brine into counter-current flow. According to the Stokes law, the, the uh, smaller, in, uh, smaller particles are falling slowly and larger particles are falling more quickly but due to the shape of the gypsum crystals they also fall down slowly despite the fact that they have the same size. So if you reverse the flow of the brine upwards the gypsum is removed and the salt crystals of the same size are falling down you are reducing the salt losses, the fines losses. Hydroclassification is a process that is similar to backwashing of uh, deep bed filters or sand filters. When we use a certain much smaller upflow of brine and we are only removing the small particles from the larger particles because the larger particles are being set into a fluidized state.
We have also taken a look at uh, what happens with the crystals where impurities are embedded and we have seen that by crushing them with sheer force we can remove some of the inside impurities. Then we have put it together and made a process out of it and um, uh, we uh, have seen that um, uh, we have to test the salt to find out how upgradable it is. And we saw that we have to test it for upgradability without crushing, with crushing and with hydromilling. This is the simple crushing equipment uh, for the laboratory. This is the purification apparatus that every one of our clients has in the lab and is testing the efficiency of his process on a daily basis. And the evaluation of the upgradeability shows what amount of impurities is removable and what is outside the salt crystals. These are the elements for which we are evaluating the test results. We are then showing the test results in a curve. This is the so-called upgradeability curve. In the upgradeability curve you see <coughs> this is the salt that was delivered for testing from the client or from the operating plant. This is <coughs> the result of the test, that means that this is removable and this is the amount of impurities that is still inside the salt crystals. And with the crushing you can do some further improvement, but for industrial salt the crushing is not recommended, neither recommended nor required. <coughs> And then we develop the process. The normal process, or the, the most of the processes that are available <coughs> and that uh, are being used, are using centrifuge for the final separation of the purified salt and of the thank you and of uh, of the of the brine. The brine is, or the filtrate is then normally sent to the settling pond. The brine is returned, mixed with the salt, then passed through some equipment, either through a screw uh, classifier, or through some drip of belt, or through some hydrocyclone, or through some screen, or whatever. There are very, very many processes uh, available for this. They are co-current processes. Instead of doing it by co-current, we said we have to do it by counter-current. And then we have collected this filtrate, put it in a filtrate vessel and added water to the filtrate vessel. Now why? Because the centrifuge is a mechanical equipment, it will break the crystals slightly. In the filtrate we have something like 4% of very fine salt which normally represents the losses. But if we dissolve this pure, fine salt in water, we create a very pure brine. And if we return this brine back to the vessel above the decanter or the thickener above the centrifuge, then we have uh, that we, then we have brine available for the purification of the salt. We purify the salt with very, few, very pure brine before the salt leaves the process. You can only achieve the highest degree of purification if you purify it with something that is also pure. And this brine is pure. Then, of course, we have to get the salt somehow into the hydro extractor, and we do that by, uh, by 
by transport, by hydraulic transport from the yellow tree to, to the hydro extractor. And then we take the overflow from the elutriator, uh, put it into a settling pond, settle the calcium sulfate and the other insoluble impurities, and return this brine, this transport brine, which is the impure brine, into the hydro extractor, the upper part, to control hydro classification, and into the elutriator to control the elutriation. And that's all. That's the whole process. The great advantage of the process is that there are two separate means of separating, the, of, of purifying the brine. The blue one is the purification with respect to magnesium and the yellow one is purification with respect to calcium. Therefore, in this process, we can adjust the calcium to magnesium ratio at least to the, within the limits that are given by the natural composition of the salt. Now, the mechanical design of this plant uh, is, of course, also a challenge. If the mechanical design is not all right, then what happens with the salt in the hydro extractor, it will flow down through the rat hole. And if something flows down more quickly than something else, then of course we have mixing. We have mixing of the pure brine uh, at the bottom with the impure brine in the top, and the process is losing efficiency. Now, we have investigated the right design of the hydro extractor at the University of uh, Norimberg in Germany. We have built a pilot plant and this is uh, what we have, how we have tested the efficiency of the counter current flow. We have, <coughs> we have incorporated small tubes and injected black colored uh, saturated brine into the flow of the salt and the brine going downwards through the uh, model of the hydro extractor. And what you can see here is that there is no black brine below the injection points. And that all the brine, all the black brine is flowing upwards. And of course, requires a certain certain height, certain dimension to actually distribute itself and to push the f downwards flowing brine upwards completely. Then of course we had to we have now tested the salt. We know what is the upgradeability of the salt but we still have to determine how much of the, up, of the removable impurity we can actually remove from the salt in an industrial plant. And for that we have been using the term plant purification efficiency. This is what goes into the plant. This is what the upgradability of the salt crushed to 1.5 millimeters is and this is <coughs> actual sample of the salt coming from the plant. Then we have uh, <coughs> put up several plants and we have operated them and we have done some, some uh, optimization exercises. And we have seen that, for example, with 100 liter of uh, purific of water input into the process, we can get this quality of the salt: 0.12 percent of sulfate. But if we increase by 20 or by 40 liters per ton of salt, we can reduce this down to something like 0 0.05.
we have then seen that the efficiency of the process depends on the difference between the sulfate at the top and at the bottom or the impurity at the top and at the bottom of the process of the of the hydro extractor and that also the removal efficiency is increased so as a result of that we are guaranteeing 90 percent of the efficiency but we can operate or our clients can operate the plants at 95 percent efficiency or even higher now this is the quality of the salt that is required to be produced and this is what we CI minerals should be producing producing as a minimum to be competitive on terms of quality with their competitors and this is just to show that uh, ultimately with this process the quality of salt that is very well compatible with vacuum salt is achievable. We have built several plants, we have built small plants, medium, large plants, we have built uh, complex plants, this is uh, one in Portugal and uh, we have achieved the record purity of industrial salt with less 1 ppm of calcium and magnesium and about 50 ppm of sulfate. So this, what we assume, is the reason why BCI Minerals has selected the hydrosol process for their, uh, for their project. And I hope that they will be making their salt into gold. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming here today. We'd like to say thank you to our sponsors, the Chinese Salt Association, for backing them, providing such support. I'd also like to say um, thank you to the delegates for coming from all around the world. It's been much appreciated. Um, and also to Vladimir for being such a wonderful co-chairman throughout the day, working tirelessly and helping us too. It's been a, a fantastic conference. Thank you very much, everybody. And we look forward to seeing you in Amsterdam in March, in the 27th to 29th of March 2019. So it will be uh, another forum for the next SALT conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> But actually, it's still...